Okay, uh, yeah, hi everyone, thanks for coming. Uh, as Lumna said, I'm Dan. Uh, I'm a member of uh, UCU at King's College London, uh, where I'm a PhD student and I'm also a graduate teaching assistant. Um, and I'm a member of UCU Marxists and uh, Socialist Appeal. Um, and I want to talk today about um, why the UCU has been on strike and what we can do to take it further and actually win this dispute. So some of you will probably have heard a number of times like, uh, you know, what, what the reasons actually are for, uh, what the reasons we're on strike for are. Um, but there's, there's, so there's two disputes. Uh, one is over paying conditions, called the four fights, um, and one is over pensions. Um, and the four fights are against uh, gender, ethnicity, and disability pay gaps, uh, casualization, uh, unmanageable workloads, and pay cuts. Uh, firstly, looking at the, the pay gaps, um, in higher education there's a gap uh, of around 15% in pay between men and women workers, a gap of 17% um, between white and black workers, and a gap of about 9% between um, uh, workers without disabilities and disabled workers. And we have to call this what it is, it's discrimination, and it's discrimination that our employers are doing nothing about. Um, not only that, but you have to see it in the context of um, real, ter real terms pay cuts. Um, the employers have recently offered uh, uh, higher education workers um, a 1.5% 1 1 pay increase, um, but that offer is, as it has been in the past, well below inflation. Um, and once inflation is taken into account, that's a real terms pay cut of over 20% since 2009. Um, not only that, but the lowest paid teachers in uh, higher education are paid only £8.70 um, per hour. And this is while student fees have been rising uh, and the salaries of vice chancellors have also been rising. <clears throat> Uh, vice chancellors earn upwards of £269,000 uh, per year, with some uh, of the highest paid, including at my own university at King's, um, earning upwards of 400000 And that's not including uh, other benefits like accommodation costs, uh, pensions that they get. Um, and that's what student fees are going towards. Uh, they're going towards um, uh, paying for vice chancellors. Um, and it shows that it's simply a lie that there's no money to, to spend on staff. Um, if universities have the, money to, to have the money to pay vice chancellors these astronomical and rising salaries, um, then they have the money to give uh, what we're asking for, a £2,500 pay rise um, to the people who actually do the, the excellent teaching and research that the universities rely on for their prestige. Um, and not only is our pay falling, um, but more and more work is being squeezed out of us for it. Um, in the sector, there are uh, about 3,500 3 staff on um, exploitative zero-hour contracts, um, and 68% of academics are on um, fixed-term contracts with no long-term job security. Um, and this includes uh, GTAs like myself, um, and universities are relying more and more on these casualized, um, fixed-term, uh, low-paid uh, workers to do really the essential work that the university couldn't run without, like running seminars, marking exams, this kind of thing. Um, a, a survey carried out by the uh, UCU revealed that four in five staff are struggling with uh, their workload, and 78% sorry, are reporting an increased workload uh, due to the pandemic. Um, and 86% have been directed towards mental health support for managing their workload. Um, not only that, but 3,000 university workers were actually made redundant during the pandemic. Um, and all of, these, all of these issues exist and management knows about them, but, uh, but ha they haven't addressed them. And they've done nothing, nothing to address them. Um, so that's the four fights. The other dispute is about pensions. Uh, and pensions, um, are, they're not a gift from, the, uh, from our employers. They're, um, we, we earn, uh, workers earn you know, uh, every penny of them and they're owed every penny. Um, but pensions in higher education have been cut by um, 240,000 pounds since uh, 2011. And the employers are also now proposing a further 35% cut um, along with um, higher contributions from uh, workers. And all this is based, the, the, this current offer is based on a valuation that was done uh, of the pension fund at the very lowest point of the coronavirus um, stock market crash. Um, so the proposed cuts are completely unnecessary. The markets recover from them and they can choose when they do their valuations. Um, it's quite transparent, really. Um, 
but so people go into um, academia for the for the love of their subjects, right? They want to work on them and think about them and teach uh, teach them to students. Uh, but you can't do that when you're being paid uh, less and less for more and more work. Um, if you're if you're on insecure and a, or casual contracts, uh, and that's doubly so if you're uh, if you're black, if you're a woman, if you're disabled, um, only to have you know nothing to show for it at the end of your. Um, working life because your pension's been gutted. Um, and this is why um, we've been forced um, to fight for our conditions by going on strike these last three days. Um, but this isn't just affecting um, university workers. Um, and it's, and, I want, and I want to talk about a little bit about the reasons how we've um, got here. One uh, of the things is the increasing um, marketization of higher education. It's, it's a, a, sorry, a symptom of uh, the increasing marketization of everything. Um, but um, more and more universities are seen by their management teams as businesses, complete with uh, students as paying customers. Um, and that's the reason that universities are spending more and more on uh, fancy buildings um, and on the salaries of their vice chancellors, as I've said, um, while spending less and less on the budgets, uh, less and less of their budgets on staff. Um, it's the same race to the bottom we see in every um, industry. We're also seeing uh, the private sector having greater and greater influence uh, in higher education through schemes like the PFI um, and increasingly small amounts uh, of public investment in, in higher education. We have to strongly oppose this. Um, students aren't our customers um, and education should be uh, free and publicly funded. Uh, and universities should be run democratically by their staff and students, not as businesses by out of touch management teams. But I think we've got to understand all these changes, this, this marketization um, in the context of a more uh, general crisis of uh, capitalism. Since the crash in 2008, um, the capitalist system has been limping along, uh, stagnating. And although there's a huge amount of uh, wealth and excess capacity, most of that in the uh, pockets of vice chancellors at universities, um, it can't be profitably put to use. Um, uh, and so the capitalist regime just doesn't work. And the pandemic's only exacerbated this trend. Um, <clears throat> our Tory government and governments around the world can't point to a way out. Um, so they're attempting to make workers pay for the crisis through austerity measures. Uh, and, and cuts and stuff. And those measures explain why university workers are facing these conditions, but they also explain why all workers are facing these conditions. Um, other unions in other sectors uh, unite, um, Unis and Unite are actually going on strike at uh, King's next week as well. Um, they're all considering uh, and taking strike action in the face of cuts and erosion of their conditions, uh, which are fundamentally no different to the ones that university workers are facing. Uh, we're going to hear in a minute from uh, Aaron, who's a representative of the NEU. Um, the crisis of capitalism is affecting workers uh, in all industries and uh, across the globe, um, and they're fighting back. Um, to take two examples, uh, two recent examples, we've seen uh, fights over fire and rehire practices um, at the Weetabix factories in the north, uh, where workers have recently escalated their action to indefinite strike four days a week. Uh, in America, um, you've seen this phenomenon of striketober, uh, where like 100,000 workers have uh, voted to go on strike in industries like healthcare, construction, coal mining, communications, food manufacturing. It's really exciting to see, I think. But what can we do about it uh, here in, in the UCU? Um, Joe Grady, the general secretary of the UCU, said in an email to members yesterday um, that we know we're right, but being right doesn't win disputes, action wins disputes. And I think she's right about that. Um, it's absolutely right that we've been on strike these past three days, um, you know, not just convincing people, but uh, showing that we can put our you know, money where our mouth is. Um, and we've made a great, great progress in showing um, students and the public that we're in the right um, and that we're winning, and we're winning them to our side. But we're not just striking for the sake of it, we have to strike to win. If we don't win, then we're going to have been uh, out in the cold and losing pay um, for, for no reason, really. How then can we win? Um, I think we have to show the employers just how serious we are about these demands. Um, if they won't come to the table, uh, then we need to escalate the fight. We need a plan for a marking boycott over Christmas um, and indefinite strike action in 2022. We won't work until our demands are met. 
This, and that's going to be hard, and it's going to require all the solidarity we can get. Um, but taking this bold step um, is really the only hope we have of anything coming of this dispute. Um, and we should learn from the brilliant example of uh, workers at the University of Liverpool um, who recently were faced with uh, redundancies and responded with three weeks, three weeks of strike uh, and a marking boycott, and those redundancies were stopped. They won their dispute. Um, but this action can't be taken and shouldn't be taken by the UCU alone. Um, to really have an impact, this kind of action should be coordinated with other trade unions, um, with other workers who are affected by the same crisis and by the same cuts. Um, with a bold, coordinated fight by the whole working class, um, we can not only win this dispute, we can also mobilise to kick out the Tories who are making us pay for the crisis, and ultimately we can mobilise to overthrow the capitalist system uh, that's caused this crisis in the first place. So, um, thank you. Great, thanks so much, Dan. It was uh, great to hear from um, yourself. Um, yeah, so my name's Aaron. I'm a primary school teacher um, and a member of the NEU Marxists uh, and a proud member of Socialist Appeal. Um, this has been a really inspiring strike um, and it really shows us the way forward in the NEU. Um, it's been great to see the solidarity between um, the students and the lecturers um, it's also been great to see the speakers from other campuses um, coming over um, and talking of cross-campus campaigns um, and the teach house as well, um, obviously showing what is possible with, with regard to free access to edu education without the profit motive of capitalism. And we've also been battling in the, in the NEU with, with pensions, pay and workload for over a decade, just like yourselves in the UCU. And let us, start, let us start with pay. Real terms pay for teachers is 20% less than in 2010. Does that sound like deja vu to you? Because it, it is, you know, it's, it's the exact same thing uh, for primary school teachers as what's happening to university lecturers. And what does this show? It shows that it's a conscious policy of the rotten Tory government. It's a, it's a blanket pay cut across the board from nursery to PhD. Teachers are getting 8,000 um, 8, less a year than in 2010. And that's even before the increased pensions contribution set in 2014. It's before the stagnating pay, the pay freeze, or, this scandalous, um, or the scandal of performance-related pay. Now, performance-related pay is the idea that teachers' pay is linked to um, students' outcomes on a test. Uh, and obviously, like the schools with the most disadvantaged pupils are hit the worst in this situation. It's essentially treating children like um, cars on a manufacturing line, like they all start from the same point and, and they're going to end at the same point. And you can't, you can't relate a teacher's pay to the outcome of, of individuals who are all so different. Obviously, um, it, it was brought in as a way to attack workers' pay and conditions. The Institute of Fiscal Studies has dubbed it the, the long squeeze on teachers' pay, but we call it a slap in the face to education. Workload is rising all the time and the goalposts are moving constantly. I was shocked to hear that a SOAS lecturer was expected to mark nine, 900 assignments one term. Similarly, one in four teachers are working more than 60 hours in a week. The impending threat of Ofsted hangs over teachers ensuring unbearable conditions, uh, workload, sorry, and um, the government's focus on exams, exams, exams are breaking the children and teachers alike. Not only would any teacher tell you that neither Ofsted nor exams um, better, like help learning in any way, but it's also led to an endemic mental health crisis in schools. Um, it's no surprise that 25% of teachers leave the career after three years. Rather than properly funding education, um, increasing pay, um, bringing more staff on, and reducing workload, the government has instead decided to lengthen the time it takes for new teachers to actually get their qualified status as a fully qualified teacher. So rather than improving um, you know, rather than improving the work conditions to convince teachers to stay, they've simply made it harder for them to leave. So, um, 
Yeah, I'll move on to academies. Now, academies were originally sold um, to schools as um, as a way to, to, it was like the answer, like the, the answer to poor performance of disadvantaged pupils. And uh, not many teachers were sold by this, but for some reason, um, the, the leadership of the schools were. Um, I think their pay packets will be the reason why, as you'll see in a minute. But um, yeah, it's, it's shown, since shown not to be the case at all that um, disadvantaged pupils are helped by this, all the standards of, of the schools are improved. In fact, quite the opposite. Um, and it, it's an intentional policy um, of eroding workers', work, workers rights, uh, attacks on pay, and skyrocketing um, workloads to squeeze more and more out of workers and, and, um, and the pupils. Um, bullying and intimidation is widespread in these academies um, as it sort of takes a, a move towards more of a business model. Um, I'll give you an example of a, of a school at, um, it's called Holland Park School, and the teachers there, uh, they've re reported a toxic culture of public shaming for poor work and exam results in the staff room at a staff meeting. Uh, apparently there's, um, teachers have reported seating plans for these staff meetings where the more favorable and, and um, hardworking teachers are at the front and the ones that they want to shame are um, shunned to the back of the room. So um, that gives you a kind of idea of, of the kind of environment here. But not only that, if you then decide you don't want to put up with that any longer and leave, they threaten to give bad references. Um, and not only threatened, they actually did it. Um, and um, there's a situation where a teacher had to plead with the new school and, and, and explain the situation. Luckily, they understood. All this is happening while they're reducing teachers' wages in academies and increasing the number of school leaders on six-figure salaries. In the 20 largest academy trusts, CEOs are receiving an average of 236,000 per year the highest paid academy boss in the country, Sir Dan Moynihan of the Harris Federation, is receiving a basic salary of £450,000. So you see, the issues that we face in primary schools are strikingly similar to the university's um, lecturers. And they are identical in the fact that they are linked by the crisis of capitalism. Um, staff are being squeezed for every drop. Um, and this attack on education staff is a direct attack on learning conditions and, and the, the quality of education that students are, are receiving. Despite Boris's leveling up nonsense, uh, schools are receiving less funding now than they did in, in 2015. So where's the extra money going? Um, and certainly not the university campuses, and it's not going to the NHS workers, um, and it's, 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 not saving, um, the, it's not saving workers from, from the rising redundancies either. It's going to save the capitalists, the ones who have who've become incredibly wealthy um, during the pandemic, and to repay the mountains of debt that the government have got themselves in. And why is this? It's to save this oppressive capitalist system I think it's clear to me that the NEU should take inspiration from this current, current strike and combine it in a joint struggle with the UCU and other unions all across the education sector. Um, you know, we're hearing of like great um, solidarity between workers of different education sec sections it's because we're facing the same fights. It should be a joint struggle. Um, this was done in t July 2014 to some extent, with over a million workers, um, which resulted in Michael Gove leaving office um, in, in a sort of a bit of shame, really. Um, but of course, he only got promoted. Um, but this kind of shows what, what can be done. Um, and also in November 2011, there was um, a strike across the whole public sector with, with two million workers and over 60% of schools closing. This was at the peak of trade unions' fight back against austerity. Um, that was a response to the 2008 crisis in capitalism. But unfortunately, it was cut across by a right-wing leadership in the Trade Union Council and the, top of the, and the top of Unison in particular, who struck a rotten deal with the Tories. But a lot has changed since then. 
and is still changing now. And we've learned some really important lessons from that time. Sharon Graham's election to Unite on the basis of backing the class struggle um, and booting the right, having the right wing boot, booted out of the Unison's um, NEC are clear signs that workers are not gonna stand for these attacks and these cuts and their conditions. And they are voting for leadership that represents their class interests, but not only represents their class interests, but who are willing to fight for those. We're now in the midst of, a, of the biggest ca uh, crisis of capitalism for 300 years. And it stands only to intensify as once again, we're being made to foot the bill. So I'll join my comrade Dan from the UCU when I say that there's strength in our unity comrades. You know, your fight is our fight and you've shown us the way forward. The NEU must join the UCU in this struggle. And there's no better time to wage, wage this joint struggle across the whole of the education sector and rally for a one day general strike as a starting gun to bring down this rotten Tory government. Thank you. Um, yeah, thank you everyone who's spoken. Thank you to um, the speakers and also everyone from the floor. I think it's been really good for us to get a feel for the mood on the picket lines in lots of different universities. It's been a cold couple of days. Um, so it's really important that all of that morale stays put. Uh, it was really good also to hear a report from Goldsmiths uh, in particular, which was noted as in this kind of epic three week strike, which might even continue in the new year. We'll see what happens. And we've been trying to report as much as we can as the Marxist Student Federation on everything that's happening in on all these campuses on all the different strikes but in particular at Goldsmiths you know we reported on the strike at Goldsmiths where um, the the title of that article I think uh, when I saw it was fighting for the soul of Goldsmiths University and I think that's really kind that's really important because that's what we're doing that's what this whole strike is about it's fighting for the soul of universities of education of higher education as a whole because we have to ask as has been the point has been made I think quite well by many people here this evening um, who is central to the running of a university who facilitates the teaching who facilitates the learning who creates the environment the safe environment that is necessary for students to learn in the first place and the answer is it's lecturers it's teaching staff it's admin staff cleaning staff security and much much more. But right now they are being attacked. It's not the vice chancellors who are having a hard time. As has been said, they're sitting on lovely six figure salaries. Meanwhile, the workers are being attacked and it's a sustained attack. The UCU are currently on their third wave of strike action in four years. But we're seeing a lot of this kind of anger develop on, on campuses. Uh, unison workers and higher education also balloted for strike action this year. And also cleaners and outsourced workers in particular, especially in London over the last couple of years have been consistently actually engaged in different industrial battles and having different elements of strike action as well due to the conditions that, they, that they're faced with. So this strike is not just a flash in the pan, it is the result of what has been said many times, the ongoing marketization of higher education. But what does that mean? Tuition fees are higher than ever before. Classroom sizes are increasing. The mental health epidemic that rages on and university management are completely um, uh, criminal, I would say actually in their response to this and the horrific conditions that students have been left in, especially after the pandemic. They face nothing but contempt students from, from management. But as has been said, things are equally fraught for staff, burdened with casualization, precarious contracts, late payments, not even being paid time in the way that they should be. All of the reasons that have been explained by Dan as well today in terms of why they're on strike, um, which might potentially continue in the new year as well. But all of that, all of the conditions that are facing students and staff right now, they're not isolated to higher education. We are living through the deepest crisis of capitalism ever. And austerity is not over. In fact, harsher austerity is set to come. 
um, and they're going to attack pensions. And this is against all workers. They'll attack pensions. They'll attack conditions. The scourge of fire and rehire has already been mentioned. In London right now, we're seeing the RMT, the tube drivers are going on strike. The point is that the bosses are trying to claw back everything that they lost in the pandemic. And they're trying to make us pay for everything that they did to bail out the system during the pandemic as well. But actually, the marketization of higher education started a long, long time ago, and it was happening before the pandemic, because capitalism is always looking for new avenues through which it can make a profit. It's always looking for new areas of society to break open and subject to the laws of the market. And the pandemic has only accelerated that process, not only in higher education, but across other sectors too. But what we're seeing is that workers aren't putting up with this, right? They're, they're fed up and actually they're beginning to fight back. And that includes young people and that includes students. The conditions of life today are radicalizing young people. Climate change, job insecurity, austerity, all of this is making young people question the world. It's, it's bubbling up a certain mood in society that eventually will explode. And that's why the majority of students support the strike. And they do, because it's, it's not just about their learning conditions, which are, of course, important. It's a part of the wider problems that are taking place in society right now that young people in particular are questioning and are angry about. They're angry about what's their, what, what they're seeing. And so, all of this anger that young people currently have won't be solved by this or that movement or this or that particular thing. There's a growing feeling that something bigger and much more fundamental needs to change because we're in a war, right? We're in a class war. And this strike, this UCU strike is a part of that war and it's a part of the fight back that's currently taking place. And students and everyone here today can and must be a part of that fight back and must be a part of that war. Um, it is an absolute outrage that certain student unions have come out against the strike. We really can't not make this point enough. And let's be clear, in doing so, they are doing the job of university management and bosses. They are doing their dirty work. We've already heard about the scourge of media propaganda, the, you know, the Daily Mail coming out against the strike. Although I think if the Daily Mail don't like you, you're probably doing something good. Um, so we don't need to worry about that. And here you have these student unions following in their footsteps, echoing the line of the Daily Mail. It's an absolute scandal. KCL, Loughborough, Leeds, other places, and we should name and shame those student unions that are playing this dreadful role in the strike. Um, and in particular, Leeds, we have to point it out because their justification for opposing the strike was particularly egregious. They said, those most affected by the strikes will be our marginalized students, specifically our disabled international and working class students. This added burden on our members is something that we want to avoid at all costs. Now, this is absolutely unacceptable. These sort of ideas are a complete poison to our movement. And that argument, by the way, is something that can and will be used to disrupt any strike of all kinds, whether it's higher education or any other sector of the economy, which is why we have to really firmly come out against such ideas. The reason that UCU staff are going on strike is due to the ongoing marketization of education. And that marketization doesn't solely affect the UCU staff, it impacts students especially working class students and marginalized students and disabled students who won't have the proper access that they need to learning due to the cutting of costs and the squeezing of students and staff that's taking place in higher education. The Leeds Student Union, you know, they, they, this part of this statement says that they want to avoid the burden that this is putting on members. Well, you cannot avoid the marketization of education. Lecturers cannot avoid the fact that their pensions are being slashed and attacked. Students cannot avoid that their access to learning is being diminished and squashed every single day, year on year on year. So we have to be really firm against these people and against these student union leaders who have played a really... Uh, terrible wrecking role in this strike and, and we completely condemn them. Um, I mean, Edgar mentioned the UCL student union that didn't consult students before they came out with this statement against the strike. But in some student unions in Loughborough, they did consult students. They ran an online survey on whether they should support the strike. 
the majority of students said yes, and they still came out and opposed the strike because they said that the people who were against it felt really strongly, so we feel like we can't, we can't, we can't oppose what's going on. It's an absolute scandal, and all of these places they should be fought. Because the point is, we need student unions that genuinely fight in students' interests, and I think it's been explained really well today why those interests perfectly align with the interests of workers. And we need student unions that fight for free education. Let's talk about free education in the midst of this, of this strike. The struggle of academic staff today is totally connected with our struggle for free education, which is something that's not spoken about that much anymore in general, and we have to talk about it. Rather than student unions who pretend to care about the needs of working class students, we need to have student unions who are fighting unions who say that education should be free. And by that we mean for everyone throughout their whole lives, we reject and we should get rid of this idea that education ends artificially at the age of 16 or 18 or 21. That's not at all the case. And so this strike and the anger that everyone feels around it really has to be something that is escalated and that we play a part in and we mobilize to build, to, to become bigger and better. Because this strike really should be the beginning of an effort to build towards a public sector general strike. And, and this is something that, that, that Aaron mentioned as well. Because the mood is there. The mood is there across public sector workers who are being crushed by inflation right now. They're being crushed by the Tories and their policies. But something like that that obviously needs to be planned, it needs to be a coordinated campaign. But such a strike would make a huge statement, as has been said by, by comments from the floor today, on who runs society. And that would be the first step towards bringing down the Tory government, which is also what we stand for, free education and bringing down the Tory government and everything that comes along with that. So the point is, if we want this strike to play such a role in being the beginning of a light of a wider movement that we clearly need, then this strike has to win. And if this strike is going to win, then we have to step up our work. We have to step up our solidarity as students and workers coming together. And I would say in particular, that includes um, building and supporting the strike fund. So we are going to ask for donations. We've got some collection pots. We've got some card readers. Um, and I would ask you to donate to the strike fund um, for the UCU that we can um, offer them as the MSF, uh, as, as, a, as, a, as a symbol of our solidarity, not just in, in the abstract, but real genuine solidarity on the picket lines and with the strike fund. And so finally, if I would say if you're not a member of the MSF or you're not a part of the organization or the Marxist societies as has been spoken about today and you believe and are convinced that this strike needs to win to be a part of a general fight back against the Tories, um, against austerity and against capitalism which is the system that upholds all of the dreadful conditions that we've spoken about today then you need to join us and be a part of that. Thank you. Yeah.